Hey guys, what is going on and welcome to another episode of Kagurabachi Chapter Review. Yes, Kagurabachi Chapter Review. I have hopped on the bandwagon, I gave a nice little read through of the new arc, and I won't lie, definitely an improvement upon the Sojo arc. Not that the Sojo arc was too bad, but long story short, I'm bought in now. The last arc was great, it really focused so much on how much power the Enchanted Blades have. The Sazanami clan was a very interesting dynamic and it gets me excited to see how some of these other portions of the world of Kagurabachi are going to go. But the most important thing that we learned from the last arc is we got introduced to the supposed Hishaku leader, which to be honest with you, I'm calling Cap. They seem like a secret organization. I don't think the leader would be so willing to show himself that quickly. They Maybe this is a guy who's pretending to be the leader or he's like the second in command. He's not the actual full-blooded originator of the Hashaku group. I could be wrong, but again, I think it's important to realize that a group like this of sorcerers and trickery, we can't take anything that they say for face value whatsoever. Long story short, now that the Shinuchi is in the Kabunambi's hands, it's pretty clear that this is exactly what the Hashaku wanted. The Enchanted Blade Wielder is a part of the Hashaku or on their side, or maybe they have a way to manipulate the Enchanted Blade Wielder, or once the Shinuchi and the Enchanted Blade Wielder make contact, they can attack the Kamunabi. All I know is, it seems like the very new protagonist squad that we're going to be working with for this brand new arc that we're going into is Hikori, Hiyuki, Tafuku, Shiba, the Goat, and Shihiro, the brand new protagonist group and honestly, the most integral person in this group is Hakuri. And I just want to yap a little bit about how much of a great character Hakuri is. Honestly, one of my major things with this story is how much Chihiro just does so much. And I think we need to start delegating some of these tasks to other people. Every time Shiba does something, I don't see it. And it makes me very upset because Shiba is such a cool character. But Hakuri is that first protagonist character besides Hiyuki, anti-hero kind of, that is able to show us their skills with sorcery and be utterly so important to the fight. Hiyuki is, of course, on the same level as Shihiro and fighting in that last fight, but Hakuri is the newest addition and I absolutely love him. The fact that he was able to transport Shihiro to Enten into the storage warehouse in the last arc and that coming back to being the way that they can actually acquire every single enchanted blade just by meeting up with all of the different wielders and just connecting and registering their, their sorcerer energy that's going to allow them to take all of the enchanted blades back from the Hashaku, which honestly is an amazing plan. I can't even hold them for that. We get this awesome page of the four remaining enchanted blade wielders, and we also find out that each of them were we also find out that each of them were picked individually by Chihiro's father in order to make sure that they could wield their, you know, enchanted blade the best possible. So I'm really curious to see the difference between a person like Sojo, who absolutely corrupted and turned Rokuhira's philosophy of sword making into slaughter and massacre. I'm interested to see what people actually chosen by Chihiro's father are going to look like, what their philosophies will be. Are they all going to be different? Are they all going to be similar personalities? They were all a part of the war that went on years ago, which that's something I also need to find out more about because you can see the difference between people that are newer in the Kabunabi and people that are older in the Kabunabi, like that one guy who knew all about the Shinuchi last arc. His composure compared to her, the newer Kamunabi agent was night and day. So I'm interested to see how the war has affected these people. But we're going to have to wait on that for right now because Chihiro has to gain the trust of the Kamunabi and actually join it. So because he's an enchanted blade wielder, he's been kind of hiding from the government for all this time. They apparently have to put him on trial. And the thing is, is Chihiro always has a plan, right? The one thing that has been completely concrete throughout this entire 45 chapter story is that Chihiro never goes into something without a plan. And look at that, that face in that final panel looks like someone who is not ready to let the Kamunabi just take advantage of them for everything they've got. So I'm excited to see how Chihiro plans to finesse the government in this next chapter. And I'm interested to see how the story goes. Are we gonna go from place to place to place of all these sacred hideouts that are keeping the enchanted blade wielders? 
Are one of these hideouts going to be attacked by the Hashaku and will introduce to more members? All I know is I'll be here for it all. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hit that like button and subscribe if you want to see more Kagurabachi chapter reviews among other series. And don't forget to check out the main channel if you want some different kinds of content. But thank you guys for everything and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.